this. Oh my God, wait. <sighs> I feel like I need to write that down somewhere so I don't forget. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Andy. I hope you're doing really well wherever or whenever in the world that you are. Happy Easter if you're celebrating. I'd love to hear what beautiful celebrations or traditions your family has if, if you celebrate. My family doesn't really celebrate, but I love hearing about other people's family traditions. So feel free to drop those comments down below. And without further ado, let's jump right into our April TBR. It is another round of reading roulette and I'm gonna increase the stakes this go about. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go ahead and click on either my January, February, or March. I've got three versions of these and they explain a little bit more in detail the rules of reading roulette and like what it is. So feel free to pause here, watch those first. But for my people who already know, let's do a quick mini teaser recap for my March reading roulette picks and status as March is coming to a close. It's March 30th, the day that I'm filming this. So my first pick was a fan fiction from a friend or sibling. And I originally was gonna read a pitch perfect reading uh, fan fiction. However, I sort of pulled an audible and made a pivot last minute. I decided to read a Mean Girls fan fiction instead. It was great but I won't say more. Now, my second pick was a fantasy by a favorite author. And for this, I haven't finished this book as of March 30th, but I'm a good chunk of the way through it. And that is Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. And then the third book was a historical fiction with the pink cover. For that, I chose Then Came You and I DNF'd it. Shh. So anyways, here are some lessons learned from January, February, and March is that I love reading roulette. And so I'm gonna increase my spins from three books. I'm gonna pick five books and we're gonna test that out in April and see how that goes. So I think that's all of the introduction necessary for now. I do really quickly wanna highlight some of the books that I'll be reading that are outside of re reading roulette, but I'll be picking up for April. Remarkably, remarkably Bright Creatures. Um, that book club date got pushed to the end of April, so I decided not to read that in March. Instead, I'm gonna read it in April. For my work book club, we are reading, sorry, I gotta look it up. We are reading The Great Divide by Christina Enriquez. And I don't know much. The one sentence intro here says, an epic novel of the construction of the Panama Canal, casting light on the unsung people who lived, loved, and labored there. So I don't know much more about it. I think it's obviously historical fiction. People were really excited. So I, I love book clubs that you get to read books that are a little bit outside of your comfort zone or it pushes you to read things that you might not typically pick up for yourself. And this is a classic example of that. So I'm really looking forward to it. For the Buzzwordathon challenge, I completely forgot about that in March. Like went right over my head. I missed it from March. It was a character name in the title. I totally flopped, I forgot about that. So I wanna make sure I put something on my TBR to help hold me accountable, help my memory. For April, the buzzword is nature words. So anything related to the planet, I think, or related to nature. So if it has like grass, dirt, flowers, trees, whatever, it counts. I'm hoping that one of my reading roulette spins will help me pick this out. If not, Future Andy, remember to come back to this and pick a pick a TBR selection. Coming in hot, editing Andy. I forgot to come back to this. So I put a picture on the screen of the book that I think I'm gonna pick up for the Nature April Buzzwordathon challenge prompt. For the book club I'm in with my mom, my sisters, and some family friends called Broads Who Book, our next pick, I think, is going to be Little Bee by Chris Cleave. Again, I have no idea what it is. I think it's historical fiction. Of course, I'll put the cover up here so you can see. Should be fun. As of right now, I don't have any April plans for readathons or reading challenges of any kind. However, that of course could change. All right, here we go. It's time. It's time for reading roulette. Yeah, reading roulette. Ah, sorry. <laughs> This is like my favorite video to film, so I get really excited. Okay, as always, I need to like tinker around to get my screen recording going. Pick number one, 
what genre are we going for? Mm. I love the anticipation. Like, what is it gonna pick? Great. Literary fiction. There's so much flexibility, endless options within this literary fiction genre. Now here's the real kicker. What kind of literary fiction are we gonna read? This is where can really make it interesting. Let's see, record, click to spin. <gasps> I don't know. Okay, physical TBR. Okay, let's let's take a take a look. Um, I think I run into an error in my brain. I don't have any literary fiction on my physical TBR that is unread. Oh no, I haven't accounted for <laughs> an oopsie like this. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video and let me think. If a spin occurs where I do not have any books under that bucket, like I can't think of anything, it does not exist, etc., then I add a spin. So I think what that means is that instead of there being five TBR picks, there shall be six, which I'm not mad about. Okay, so spin number one, which was a literary fiction on my physical TBR, does not exist. The only books on my Kindle, my audio, and my physical TBR, they are nonfiction, romance, and fantasy. No literary fiction. So, we shall spin again. I feel like I need to write that down somewhere so I don't forget. <laughs> Take a little trusty notebook. Let's write it down. All right. Take two. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that was unexpected, but we're going to be flexible and move on. All right, record for spin number two. What genre are we going for? Mm -hmm. Okay, nonfiction. We love this because I have a goal about reading more nonfiction. I have nonfiction on both my physical, my audio, and my Kindle TBR. Love that. Now, what kind of nonfiction are we going to be reading? I'm stressed this time. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I just hit the camera a little bit. I don't know if I'm center. Okay. Nonfiction that is. Interesting with a feeling word in the title. Interesting. Okay, let's figure that out. One book that would fit this that I've already read, so I wouldn't want to put it on this TBR, but if you're playing along, could be Permission to Feel by Dr. Mark Brackett. It is a really fantastic book about a particular approach to social emotional learning. It's great. Loved it. I could read Furiously Happy by Jenny Lawson. I think this is a memoir of her life. It's not a book that I was like previously wanting to read, but like fits this bucket. This might be a little bit of a stretch, but it's my game and my rules, so I get to be the judge, is I've been wanting to read The Holocaust Industry, Reflections on the Exploitation of Jewish Suffering. I feel like reflections, reflective, I feel exploited, exploitative, whatever. Suffering, those are all kind of feeling words. That kind of, they are. So maybe that could be a contender. What else could I read? Empire of Pain, I could maybe read. Mm. Maybe I'll read The Myth of Normal. Oh, that might be too heavy. I don't know if I want to read that. Okay, well, there's at least like a few options. You'll have to come back for the April wrap up to see what I end up deciding. All right, here we go. Spin number three. Go. Have I already regretted choosing more selections? I don't know. Okay, graphic novel. Fun, graphic novel. Now what kind are we gonna be reading? Let's see. I don't know. Ah, okay, reread. My instinct is I'd like to read Nimona. Again, I really love that. We read that 
early on in our bra to book book club existence. So I could read Nimona. I could also do a reread of the Heartstopper graphic novels. I read the first few, but I don't think I've read the the last one or the last couple. So that could be one I reread. What else could I reread? I don't read a ton of graphic novels. Um, I really only tend to pick them up for book clubs or if they're like really popular. Okay, yeah, I think those are probably gonna be my two options. Do I reread Nimona or do I reread Heartstopper? Love both of those, so I love that for me. All right, spin number four. Here we go. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, thriller mystery. This is great because I think this is one of, on my reading goals for this year, this was one of the reading outside my comfort zone genres. So I love that. What kind of, what kind of thriller mystery should I look for? You know what? I would love if somehow I can fit the new Deanna Rayborn book because that just came out. Let's see. What kind of mystery or thriller? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, when I put Andy, my intention was to pick a book whose author was Andy, a uh, main character's name was Andy, or in the title, that's Andy. I gotta do a little research. Wow, this is a research-heavy reading roulette. Let's see, where do I even start with this? We have a possibility. The book is called Underneath by Andy M. Long. It looks like it's maybe a romantic thriller or psychological thriller. That might be the book we pick unless I can find something else. Oh wait, is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder? Is the main character in that Andy? Oh my God, wait. Huzzah, it is, okay. You know what, I read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, but I never picked up Good Girl, Bad Blood. So I think that's what we'll pick up for this. Great, okay, that's what we're gonna do. So for spin number four, a thriller or mystery. Guys, I'm getting hot, I'm stressed. <laughs> My glasses are fogging up. A mystery or thriller with Andy as a character, I'm gonna read Good Girl, Bad Blood. All right, spin number five. What are we gonna get? What are we gonna get? What are we gonna get? This has been a chaotic reading roulette. Oh, my lanta. Okay. <laughs> poetry, we can do that. What kind of poetry are we reading? How much research am I gonna have to do for this one? <laughs> All right, let's see. All right, poetry. Okay, by a BIPOC author. I'm like, what else from Clint Smith can I read? I was hoping it was gonna land on nature because then that would count for my buzzword of thon whatever. There are so many good options for this, but let me pull up my Goodreads to see like what I already kind of have been wanting to read. One option is I could read Time is a Mother by Ocean Vong. I haven't read anything from them, so that could be an interesting selection. I could read Counting Descent by Clint Smith. He's already a favorite of mine. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I know you can probably hear Francis's laser toy going on in the background. I could read kind of a classic. Maybe I pick up I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. That could be an interesting one for me. Okay, I may think on this a little bit longer. If you have any recommendations, please let me know always in the market, and it could help me make a decision. On to spin number six. Spin number six. Okay, what kind of book are we reading? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I must admit, I'm a little relieved to at least have one book in my comfort zone. <laughs> Contemporary romance, great. I can work with that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see, what kind of contemporary romance am I doing? <sighs> okay, 
a sequel. Okay. Contemporary romance that is a sequel. I feel like there are plenty of these that I can pick from. One option is London Calling by Darby Bayham. Shameless plug, I don't know if this video is gonna go out in time, but on Wednesday, April 3rd, I'm joining Darby Bayham on Instagram Live for kind of a fun book club discussion about her newest release called Her New York Minute. This is the book previous London Calling is. I've read The Shoe Diaries and Bloom Where You're Planted, so London Calling could be a perfect fit for this spin. Low key, I'm really itching to read A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams, but I know that that's technically not a sequel, but I've been really wanting to read that. And I should have read it in March because that would have been my buzzword. But anywho, can't go back. I could read Reckless by Elsie Silver. That's the fourth book in the Chestnut Spring series. I think I might have that on my Kindle, so I could read that. Hmm. I could read Black Girls Must Have It All. This is the third book in the Black Girls Must Die Exhausted series by Jane Allen. I buddy read the first two books with one of my friends from work. Uh, her name's Amber. And we both love them, and I kind of forgot about the third book. So I could read that. There are some options for contemporary romance that's a sequel. Let's move on to pick... I mean, spin number six. Here we go. What are we reading for our sixth, fifth, fifth book? Sixth spin. Okay. Alrighty. Historical fiction. I'm not mad about that. Historical fiction, but what kind? I genuinely don't know. I don't know what to expect anymore at this game. <laughs> Let's see. What kind of historical fiction are we gonna get? Oh no. By a disliked author. Hmm. Let me think for a second. A lot of my least favorite authors are fantasy writers. So this might be trickier than I expected. Has Colleen Hoover? wrote any historical fiction? Probably not. Okay, I did way back when I read for the book club I'm in at work, we read The Paper Daughters of Chinatown by Heather B. Moore. And we did not like it very much. So maybe I read another book of hers. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, that's probably one possibility because at least she writes historical fiction. <sighs> I also, for that same book club, we read Deacon, Deacon King Kong by James McBride and I also really didn't like it. His writing style just wasn't for me, but I think he's actually quite popular. So I could read Miracle at St. Anna. That's one of his books that's historical fiction. I'm not feeling very enthusiastic about this selection. <laughs> Am I gonna unintentionally DNF or not read these? Maybe. Those might be my options as of right now because searching for these is putting me in a bad mood. It's making me grumpy. So it looks like it's probably gonna be Miracle at St. Anna by James McBride or I've already forgotten which, which one of hers I picked. Maybe The Slow March of Light? If this is gonna be a religious book, that might really make it hard for me. This one says, a riveting and emotionally gripping novel of an American soldier working as a spy in Soviet-occupied East Germany. <sighs> okay, we'll see, we'll see. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised, you never know. All right, here's our final pick for our sixth book, our seventh spin. What a journey this has been. Oh my goodness. Okay. What are what kind of book are we going for? <clears throat> Let's see. Oh la la. Okay. A dark romance. What kind of dark romance? <sighs> Dark romance with one word title. Okay. Once again, I've got to do a little research. 
Can I, can the one word title be something to do with nature? <laughs> I could read Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. Don't know anything about it. I could read Credence by Penelope Douglas. I feel like people either love that book and are passionate stands or they vehemently hate that book. So maybe I read Credence. Again, I don't know anything about it, but I, I think there's some step-sibling stuff going on, which I don't think is gonna be everybody's cup of tea. Hence, Dark Romance. I could read Priest by Sierra Simone, although uh, even just saying that out loud, I don't think that's the one I wanna read. I could read Praise by Sarah Kate. I feel like Sarah Kate is kind of a controversial author, but I don't know why I think that. I could read Deliver by Pam Godwin. I really like Pam Godwin, some of the stuff, like I've read some of her historical fic, or her historical romance. So maybe that's the one I go for. Honestly, probably, yeah. Probably the Pam Goodwin Deliver or Penelope Douglas's book. <laughs> I'm not sure. Tricky, tricky choices. I don't know. All right, friends, we've got a really eclectic mix going into April. This is the most stressful reading roulette I've ever done. Maybe five picks is too many. I don't know. We're going to see. Okay, so here's our summary. For spin one, we spun a literary fiction on my physical TBR, which did not exist. So I had to add an additional spin. So for the second spin was a nonfiction with a feeling word in the title. Here are the books that I mentioned and I'm gonna circle the one or star the one that I think I'm gonna end up reading. I like reading roulette because it does give me some flexibility. So if I change my mind throughout the month, I can do so. But these are the ones I'm thinking of. The starred one is the one I'll probably pick up. The third spin was a graphic novel, but a reread. So something I've already read before. And I think I'm gonna read either Nimona or the Heartstopper series, kind of depending on my mood. The fourth one was a thriller or mystery with Andy in the title, character, author, names in some way, shape or form. And so for this, I'm gonna read Good Girl, Bad Blood, the second book in the, I don't know, Holly Jackson series. For the fifth spin, I picked a Poetry by a BIPOC author. If I know me, I'll probably read Clint Smith's debut poetry collection. However, I could read the one by Maya Angelou. Again, I'll like put all of the ones that I was thinking of with a star next to the, to the one that I think I'll probably read. My sixth spin was a historical fiction with a disliked author. And for this, I was kind of waffling between Heather B. Moore, The Slow March of Light, or James McBride, Miracle at St. Anna. Again, I'll star the one I'm thinking of reading, but I'm not particularly excited for either. And then my seventh spin was a dark romance with one word in the title. Again, I'll put up the ones that I was thinking of with a star next to the book that I think I'll end up picking up. Seven spins, six books. Friends, I am clearly no mathematician because something about my math is not mathing. I have made too many spins on the roulette wheel. And so a natural consequence is that I've added an additional book to my TBR in this little wrap-up section. I completely forgot about one of my picks, which was a contemporary romance that is a sequel. So it looks like I've got even more books to read, but I just had to insert that because I made an oopsie. <sighs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to be very strategic this April about getting all these books read because None of them are really the same genre, the same kind of book. We'll see how the mood reader in me responds to this kind of challenging TBR list. I'm excited, but I'm a bit weary if I'm being honest. So we'll see. I'd love to know in the comments down below, have you read any of the books that I've mentioned? Do you have any opinions or recommendations to any of these reading roulette picks? Because I'm waffling between quite a few books and several of the spins, several of the categories. So if you have any preferences or recommendations, I could use the help. This reading roulette was a roller coaster of a video for me. I was schwitzing at one point. I'm stressed. My glasses are fogging up because I'm doing the research. Anyways, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you've had a wonderful March reading month and are excited about all of your TBRs for April. If you've made it this far, go ahead and leave a rainy emoji or an umbrella emoji because 
you know, April showers, bring me flowers. If you'd like to support my channel, please like, subscribe, do all the buttons, turn on the notifications, whatever. It really does help my channel. And I'm getting close to a thousand subscribers, which is very exciting. And yeah, I think that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next video soon. Bye.